How folks that should be going Scott 2572 thank you so much for the resub buddy I'd be stupid welcome um, and I'm chats running so so far so good uh, a little bit better than where we were at on Saturday but um, after chatting with uh, lumpy pickle a little bit I think I may have figured out what the issue had been um, and so I unplugged and replugged in things and ran a test on I think it was Saturday night or Sunday night I don't remember which um, just to see if you know what I was doing was working and so 
so far so good. I mean, the I've got my uh, stream manager up and running. I've got you know my system set up, and so far we're looking pretty good. So yeah, uh, so far so far so good. It's been a it's been kind of an interesting day so far. Um, woke up this morning to a message from Mrs. Wayso that. Um, some folks that we know were in need of my help. Uh, specifically, um, a gentleman that we knew from church, um, his dad uh, had passed away yesterday. Um, but it wasn't like a sudden thing because about two weeks ago he had a stroke and fell in the kitchen and had hit his head on the counter and he'd been in the hospital ever since. Uh, effectively in a coma and so it wasn't um, it wasn't unexpected so because of my background and having worked um, in the funeral industry uh, they they had asked for some advice because they had downloaded a copy of the general price list uh, from the funeral home that they were going through and they had some questions about you know what was necessary and what wasn't and so we sat down for about a half hour or so and I kind of ran through things it's like okay you know this is this is the kind of thing that you're you are gonna need this stuff not necessary um, and so they're taking care of business and such so I was just happy that I was able to help out um, and so that's what my morning started off with but uh, I got a little bit later start on kind of getting prepped for for today and but that's okay um, posted on Instagram and it went over to uh, Facebook uh, that I pickled uh, red onion did a quick pickle on it because uh, I'm gonna be doing potato tacos today and these pickled onions are perfect uh, to go on top and this isn't something that I've ever made before um, Mrs. Wayso is a big fan of the potato tacos and so I figured okay well we'll give them a shot I mean you know why not um, but my my plan of action at least for for that is in in looking at a whole bunch of different recipes online uh, for some variation of potato tacos some of them were like purely potatoes some of them were like mostly beef with some potato. Hey, I see Nick Wolf. Welcome, welcome. Um, so it was a question of like, okay, well, what, what are these, what are these folks doing? What all is, um, kind of their MO and how are they approaching it? And in looking at them, for the most part, it seems like what, uh, what they're doing is they're viewing it as a way to uh, stretch the dollar, um, since beef, especially these days, is a lot more expensive than it has been. And so it makes sense that, hey, if you're feeding a crowd, this is a good way to kind of stretch it and be filling and be delicious, but not be quite as expensive as just doing straight up meat. And so um, in looking at all of these recipes and all these different approaches uh, there's a couple of things that I picked out and I honed in on and said okay I think this is what I'm gonna do to approach it so like I said never done this this is totally on the fly it could be a fantastic disaster uh, it could be a total mess but it could be amazing um, so we'll see I don't know um, but my plan is to kind of start off making the, the taco meat like how I normally do by you know putting the meat in the pan, uh, covering it with water and kind of slowly cooking it that way. But at the same time, throw in the potatoes to uh, boil at the same time and then let the water completely cook off. So then that way it softens the potato and we got the meat in there and then we'll mash it all together um, to form the, the filling that's gonna be uh, more paste-like, I would say, is kind of the consistency that we're going for, as opposed to kind of a loose filling, because we're going to deep fry these suckers. 
Um, we're gonna put them in tortillas. We're going to, yeah, we're gonna deep fry these guys. So it could be amazing. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I've not done this, so I'm I'm kind of excited to see what happens. Um, and for sort of the hilarity that ensues. But I mean, even in kind of reading and doing some other stuff. Hey, Nick, welcome, welcome. Um, it it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because I'm I'm thinking that they're almost gonna be a bit like. In LA, there is this super famous place called Tito's Tacos. It's it's up in LA, and it's kind. Their signature taco is kind of this deep fried taco with like shredded beef and stuff inside. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, this will be you know kind of like that because uh, once it comes out of the fryer, it's like they'll hit it with you know the lettuce and the cheese and whatever toppings. And so we're gonna do that. Um, I've got iceberg lettuce, which generally speaking, I don't use for anything because there's not a whole lot of nutritional value in it and it's kind of crunchy water. But for this, it sort of makes sense. And so we'll do some iceberg lettuce. We'll shred some cheese, which I'm going to want to put down on the meat itself because I like the melty cheese on there. Um, so that'll be good. Speaking of LA, is Pink's Hot Dogs the Shiznit? We'll talk about that in just a minute. Remind me, Scott. Um, cause I've eaten there multiple times and so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, they're probably really good with sweet chili sauce as a topping, kind of like a play on a meatless lumpia. Yeah, they probably would be. Um, sounds about right. Yeah. And I know exactly the sweet chili sauce that you're talking about. That would probably be quite good. I would imagine. Um, yeah, so we'll hit it with the, the cheese. We'll hit it with some lettuce. We'll do some tomatoes in there too. Um, bit of hot sauce. A uh, little bit of um, uh, Mexican crema, which is, it's kind of a cousin of sour cream, but not as sour and not as, uh, not as thick, if that makes sense. Yes, I am making a snack. Whoa, hey, Lumpy Pickle. Welcome, welcome, buddy. Glad you're here. Um, but crema, if you can find it, definitely use it. Uh, if not... Use sour cream. If you don't want that, don't use it at all. Doesn't matter. Um, I would put avocado on these, but unfortunately I don't have any ripe ones at the moment. So, potato. Yeah, exactly, taters. Um, yeah, unfortunately I don't have any ripe avocados at the moment or else we would absolutely be putting uh, sliced avocado on these. So I, I'm really excited for how this is gonna go and really crossing my fingers that it turns out pretty good <laughs> if not oh well uh it could be interesting um yeah just get one from five minutes ago no no it, it's you, you pick them they're hard like rocks for two weeks and then there's about a 30 millisecond window when they're perfect and then they just go horribly wrong um that's just how avocados roll uh back up to scott connor's question about pink's hot dogs so Pink's hot dogs is interesting. Um, it's good. It's iconic. If you're in Hollywood, I highly recommend going. Is it the be all end all of hot dogs? Not in my opinion. Um, it's very good and there's a pretty wide variety. I would avoid the fries personally, at least the last few times that I went there. They don't have like the normal fryers that you think of. It's literally like this self-contained Orita machine that they put a little tray in and pull them out. It's really kind of strange, but yeah, Pink's hot dogs definitely, you know, go. If you're in LA, I say definitely check it out because it is a, a very iconic thing um, for LA. Um, there's like a hundred billion amazing places to eat there. So uh, there is a hot dog truck. I don't know if it's still rolling around. It was called um, Dogzilla. And it was, it's a hot dog truck that kind of does a slight Japanese spin on hot dogs, which is amazing. And whenever it was around, if we had a chance, we'd 
like to get it. Um, so, yeah, L.A. is really kind of a, it's a very crazy place. However, it's got phenomenal food from all over the place. If, if, if there's like a specific kind of cuisine that you're thinking that you want, chances are it's in L.A. Dogzilla's still rolling? Okay, good to go. Thanks. Um, but yeah, L.A. has got phenomenal food from all over the world. Ethiopian, whatever. Um, chances are if there's a uh, an immigrant population of any size, they're going to have food. Um, they're going to have food there. So, okay. Let's get started. So... The big thing that we're going to need to do initially is get the the filling going. So let's get started on that before anything else. So let me grab that. This that. So I grabbed an Anaheim pepper to throw in there because, well, Anaheim peppers and this is good. And let me go to that shot. Got an onion, got that Anaheim pepper. Since I'm in here, I will pull that out. That. I won't need that till the end. Okay. So we got that. We got that. Got to have some garlic. Uh, let's see what else do I need. A couple of potatoes. I'm going to use Yukon Golds for these. Um, russets seem like kind of the obvious choice, but... I'm, uh, I'm kind of feeling Yukon Golds because, well, it's what I normally use for mashed potatoes anyway, and we're going to be mashing this up a bit, so we have an Ethiopian restaurant here, and we're not big at all. I really like poblonos when they kill it. Yeah, poblonos are really good. They get turned, when they're dried, they turn into anchos, um, just as kind of an FYI. It's funny, when they, when mo a lot of chilies dry, um, they get called by a totally different name. I don't know why. Um, okay. So norm, let's see. Thinking through this. Normally, when it's just Mrs. Weiss and myself, I usually make about a pound of meat to turn into tacos, and then we'll end up having some leftovers, which I can have taco salad the next day or something like that. But because we're augmenting it with potato I'm thinking about a half pound ish of meat because I want to get that kind of mash going um, so it's a uh, kind of a solid filling that sticks together so then when we put them into the tacos to fry them later it doesn't just go everywhere so yeah that's kind of what I'm thinking it's like you can see the wheels turn in real time we hear the squeaking. So let's see. This pack has got about a pound and a half in it. So I am going to guesstimate about a third. Yeah, I'm going to go with about a third. Okay. DK is making some stuff up on the fly. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Semi lurking will he finish up work? Well, good luck. Hopefully, work doesn't uh, kick back too hard on the Icenic Wolf. You know, vegetarian Mexican, I I think could be really good um, Mexican 
cuisine gets kind of um, painted in a very specific light here, at least here in the States. And there's so much like regional variety that we just don't see, generally speaking. Um, and that's only because, you know, it's not something that we're, we're used to seeing. Um, but there is a pretty wide variety of, um, like vegetables that are used all the time in Mexican, Mexican food. So I honestly, I think a, me a vegetarian Mexican cuisine could be really good, um, especially in the hands of like some of the abuelas, um, like you get the you get the grandmas making it and it's probably amazing. Never make lengua or sesos tacos. I don't I, I can't promise. Um, you never know. That could be a thing. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I so I, I can't promise that. And if I do, may, I, it may or may not be on the stream. But uh, yes, I'm I'm aware. So, so brain tacos it actually there's a whole thing usda brains and stuff like that like if you can use cow brains um these days i don't know how available those are um just because of um because of the whole mad cow disease thing and so because of that it's I don't know of anywhere that legally sells it. Um, I know it can be done with pig brains, but beef brains is traditionally, I think, the ones that are used. That would be my guess. But at any rate, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking I want to do. I'm thinking the three potatoes that I pulled out, because I kind of want. An equal amount or at least enough to that when um, when they get mashed up that it will uh, be a good proportion of potato to beef and stick together so that's kind of where I'm going I don't know the weights of these I would I think when I bought these potatoes earlier today um, I thought I remember it saying that the weight of these four was somewhere around two pounds or something like that. But the density between beef and potato is going to be a little bit different. And you know, it's interesting in, in again doing the research and just trying to work out, you know, kind of a working theory on how to make all this that there are some that said um, when it comes to frying them um, taking clothespins soaking them in water mass is the same but density I mean well the weight is the same but the density is going to be different if that makes sense um, but when it comes to frying, they were saying take like clothespins and soak them in water and then use those to hold the uh, the tacos closed while you fry them, which seemed like a, an, it had me until the whole soaking part just because, okay, so these wooden clothespins are soaked in water, which means that there's gonna be moisture and moisture and hot oil uh, don't mix very well. Um, I would say that they mix poorly, very poorly. Um, others were like, oh, you know, just use a toothpick or whatever. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that, you know, using a toothpick to kind of keep them closed. I mean, that's kind of what most people end up using. Um, but again when I was at the market today and I was just like oh, okay well let's look at the wooden clothespins because I thought okay well that might be kind of decent um, the amount that they had for sale was like a 50 pack and I'm like I don't need a 50 pack of wooden you know 
clothespins? And what am I going to do with these things? And plus, they wanted like seven bucks for the 50 of them. I'm like, eh, I don't think so. But uh, thankfully, hanging like right underneath, um, yes, they had toothpicks, but then they had these uh, like miniature bamboo um, skewers. Or actually, wait, hang on. These guys, these little bamboo skewers that are thinner and also longer. So I thought, hey, these I think would be even better just because whenever you try to like um, thread a toothpick through, because they're short, you kind of have to keep the holes closer together and it, I, there's a bigger chance of it tearing apart if they're a little bit further apart because these guys are bigger I think uh, I think it'll work better at least that's my working theory all right yeah let's do this last potato and then we'll get just enough water to cover and then we'll get the heat on it and then we'll chop up the onion and get that in and we'll do the same with the Anaheim pepper and we'll also throw plenty of garlic in there too. I don't know if you're still around, Nick, but uh, so funny, or maybe not funny, haha, but interesting side story. When I was trying to come up with the menu uh, for when you guys came over, um, one of the things that I thought about making was like a um, kind of a carne asada bowl that the marinade actually works really well with um, mushrooms. So then that way I could very easily put together a vegetarian bowl as well as uh, like a carnivorous bowl for folk so I was just thinking about tacos and stuff like that because I'm prone to thinking about tacos all right so far we're looking pretty good yeah so next time y'all are in town <laughs> deep-fried Oreos <laughs> Deep frying old shoe. It depends on the shoe. Uh, if I had deep fried taco type things that the restaurant used twine to keep them closed before, it seemed to work pretty well, I guess. I don't deep fry much at home. Um, I can see how, like if it was a cotton twine, that it would uh, probably work okay. I would just be concerned about what it would leave behind in the oil itself. Uh, I do not have a blog with all of the recipes. However, on my Discord, if, I, if, if I've if i nailed down recipes, Nick, I will put them in um, on the Discord itself. And uh, so because this is, I'm literally making up on the fly, I don't have it written down. Same with like the broccoli cheddar soup that I made. Um, what was that, like a week ago or something like that? Um, I don't have a recipe. Hey, for pizza! Great, let's up. dig in! What did I do? Oh, the socials thing? Wait, what happened? I see it did it twice. Oh, stream elements threw it up? That's weird. Huh. Hey, Hazel Newts, welcome to the party. Um. I need to disable stream elements because I'm using. Streamer bot in, uh, hmm. 
Okay, so mental note, back end stuff. <sighs> Turn off. Stream elements. Uh, get snack bot back. Okay. This way I don't forget. I've got my to-do list. Ooh, that's starting to come up to a boil already. All right. Good. I should probably stop talking and start chopping. All right. Get this Anaheim pepper prepped. I already washed it, so. Alright. Uh, I was talking about that broccoli cheddar soup. And you know, it's interesting. Um, after we after I made it and we ate it over the course of a couple of days, um, I had a thought about it that could potentially make it easier to make slash healthier. Um, yes, same water procedure as the taco meat lumpy pickle. Exactly. Um, kicked it off and then stream elements did again. Interesting. Well, better have to do too much. Yeah, exactly. Too much information is uh, uh, better than none. Uh, same water. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, same basic water procedure where we're, you know, simmering it until the water completely evaporates. And then that way it leaves the meat really nice and fluffy. That's what we want. And since we're also boiling the potatoes at the same time, and we're just letting that go until the water completely evaporates off. And then we'll mash it together. But in the meantime, we need to chop up the rest of this and get it, get it in. Jumped there for a second because it was like, oh, hey, <laughs> that knife is not supposed to be there. It's probably somebody walking by the house. That's why Vera's barking. I have to say, I've actually been really happy with the fact that uh, um, there's a, a guy that I watch on YouTube that does these um, videos specifically on like um, helping you become like a better streamer, specifically like how to, you know, better set up your mic, how to, you know, do all this stuff. And he's a guy that, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, I, like, I dig on his videos. And he did one last week that um, uses this Reaper plugin. What's in the jar? Pickled red onions that are going to go on the tacos. And, um, too much of, yeah. Um... Anyways, he did this thing on this Reaper plugin of all things for OBS that um, has a filter in it, uh, a subtractive filter specifically. So then that way um, you can take like a baseline measurement of the ambient sounds in the room and then it subtracts that noise. And I've noticed by doing that, that it dropped the noise floor because for the longest time, I've heard those that have been around since the beginning, they'll remember that for the longest time, there was just like this ambient hum and it was, you know, kind of annoying. And it took me a while to kind of figure out what it was and how to adjust for it. But then, um, even though I'd kind of taken care of the issue, there was still like this baseline hum that was really low. And it bugged me because I knew it was there. I may not have been able to hear it, but I, it bugged me because it was still there. And uh, yeah, after finding this, it was like, oh, give me two seconds to let the mic kind of pick up the ambient noise and build the subtractive filter and that's it. So I'm like, 
This rules. I'm very happy. broccoli cheddar soup that I was talking about um, so at least when I made it on stream the methodology that I used was okay let's take all the vegetation you know specifically like the broccoli stems as opposed to the florets let's saute them up and then we'll blend them with the broth yeah it's a noise gate effectively um, a waves plugin that does that it works really well grab it during their cyber week sale this was a this was a free download from reaper um completely free and so i was just like oh sweet because i know some of y'all love the reaper for um like guitar effects and stuff like that but no this was a completely free download um if i can find the link i'll put it up but uh yeah no it really awesome it was just like a total i think the entire download was maybe a meg and a half like seriously 1.5 megabytes nothing and um so now my mic has got i think five filters running on it at the moment um but this is what happened when I, i'm working with a bit of a boom mic and so you got to do what you got to do you know what i mean I was going to stream learning how to do things on stream and then thought, uh, folks are going to just go to YouTube for that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a lot of that. What's, what is kind of funny is that a lot of these folks that I'm watching on YouTube, they have their own Twitch streams where they do stuff like that live, but then they pre or they'll either edit stuff that they did live and then put it on YouTube or they'll shoot the content specifically for YouTube. And it has been really um it's actually been really fun kind of learning about all of this stuff because there's so much like on the back end that i know i have barely scratched the surface uh when it comes to just the obs software and setting up scenes and um switching and in fact like i know like give it six months and I'm willing to bet that everything that I have set up will be completely different. Like I recently just learned how to um, crop the image that the camera sends to the software. So then that way I, I'm not having black bars or I can, you know, choose to show the full frame or not. And so these are things that make me happy. All right, we need some garlic because garlic, and we don't need a little bit of garlic. We need like a fistful of garlic because fistful of garlic. I wonder if that was the title of a uh, spaghetti western, fistful of garlic. Oh man, I love spaghetti westerns. Always make me laugh. Hail Hydrate. Yeah, it really was just an idea a couple of months ago. And it was one of those, okay, you know, I think we can do this, but I remember in talking to one of my cousins, she's a, uh, she's a painter. And, but she's like painted for my entire life. And people had said, oh, you should totally like do original paintings and sell them. But she just never, she never felt like she was good enough to actually do that sort of thing. And she found a podcast that was by this life coach. I, I don't remember her name off the top of my head. But she started listening to it and it made her change how she was thinking about things. And one of the very first lessons, working title from the Food Dust Till Dawn, exactly. There's, calzones are an abomination. <laughs> Sorry, Scott, I had to. Um, but 
the very first uh, episode of her podcast was about embracing the suck. I'm just crushing garlic and then chop it up. Um, but she said that, in essence, and it's part of the reason why the dumpster fire uh, emote was one of the first ones that I uploaded, was that in the beginning, you, it's going to suck. You just have to embrace it. You have to realize that, yeah, it's not going to be pro level because you're not a pro yet. But if have being fearful of starting because you're it's not going to be good enough if that's what's keeping you from starting you need to eliminate that fear because guess what nobody is a genius and perfect from day one you embrace the suck you realize hey there's going to be accidents there's going to be all sorts of craziness you embrace it and you go through it you know people tend to get embarrassed and be like oh you know they stuff like that I, I don't have that issue um i fully embrace the fact that i will most likely make a fool of myself i'd like to refer you to the okonomiyaki episode of tactical snacking with decay um that last one was a spectacular failure and i laughed the whole time um <laughs> still makes me laugh just thinking about it uh but that's just part of the process learning and growing you know and if you don't you have to just start that's the big thing if you can start everything else after that is easy because then you're going to learn and you're going to change i mean this is very different than the very first like episode this is very different than everything else and i mean i'm still like learning and changing and you know deciding like um how i want to do things how i want to change things up you know uh figure out what's working figure out what's not change the stuff that isn't working and try something different you know um it's funny i was thinking <laughs> the the idea of finding one's voice right and <laughs> this reminds me of high school actually um i had a a, a teacher uh she taught ap us history and part of that class was writing a lot of essays and a lot of papers and stuff like that that was just how it went and in fact before the class even started like at the end of the previous year you had to do like this uh sort of like an entrance test to see if she a she would let you into the class as and part of it was like writing this essay and one of her big things was about finding your your writing voice okay And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, my writing voice, like what on earth, what on earth are you talking about? What do you mean your writing voice? Like I have one voice, this voice, I, and it, it's, you know, and I'm like, that's just who I am. So, and it, and it always felt to me like the idea of having a, a different voice, um, felt sort of disingenuine. And I don't know, it always sort of bothered me. So like whenever you, it, like if I ever uh, write anything, it's gonna sound exactly like I talk because that's how I write. You know, it's just straight up, this is me, this is my writing. Um, a great example of that being the case. When um, I went up for my border review, um, so I am an Eagle Scout and I went up for the final border review uh, for that um, part of it is you have to there was a, a service project that you had to do where 
you had to get people involved and do some kind of community service and everything else and you had to do a full write-up of it at the end and because of my involvement in um, in the Boy Scouts leading up to that of the I think I forget how many people were on the board of review like I personally knew every one of them except for I think like one person um, this is just my saltless taco seasoning that I'm getting out so I'm thinking ahead um, anyways they all knew me from years of doing other things and as they're reading through it they they told me after the fact <laughs> which was kind of funny because I think there was like three or four of us that night that were going in to do this final board review yes my 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 handwriting has lots of hand gestures it makes sense that that's the case um there was like four of us that were in you know doing this and they intentionally put me last to make me sweat because they knew me like they didn't really know any of the other you know boys that were up for it but they knew me and so they're like we're gonna make them sweat just because we can and uh afterwards i'm talking to them and they're like dude you had it before you even walked in the door it's like the moment they were looking at the the notebook and reading it they knew that my parents had nothing to do with it they knew it was all me because it was exactly like i talked and they're like yeah this is all him he did this and it was just it made me laugh and so it was just kind of funny okay this is boiling down nicely Ooh, potatoes are starting to break up. That's good. We're getting close. I suppose I should, like, shred cheese, chop lettuce, do tomatoes. Yeah, let's do that. My scout project? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't a cover song. So my project was um, the Surf Rider Foundation um, was doing kind of this long-term project of spray painting the um, storm drains, you know, no dumping leads to ocean. Um, it was just kind of their their pet project and they figured hey you know there's plenty of boy scouts who are trying to do service hours and things like that so let's let's have them um kind of work on it so in hearing about this this is before it became like a common thing and so much so that at least the council not too long after i did the project they stopped accepting it as a acceptable service project because it was way way too common hey mini metal welcome um anyways so they gave us uh basically my hometown um they gave me a large stack of maps showing where storm drains were as of the making of those maps and I said, okay, cool. So they gave us these stencils. They gave us uh, this paint and said, okay, cool, have fun. I ended up wanting to do like the entire city because I figured, well, I mean, I suppose I could do, you know, a couple of days organizing people and have it be a thing, but I'm like, it doesn't really feel like it accomplishes anything. And what was interesting is during the entire time that I had the project and did the project, there were two other boys that kind of like temporarily took some pages and like did their thing. Um, meanwhile, I'm like, no, we're going to we're going to continue working on this. I forget how long in total I had it. I think it was like six months or something like that. I don't remember exactly how long. Um, 
but like I'd organize people, we'd go out and do it. They ended up having to make um, metal stencils because the, the plastic ones they'd made were just falling apart. Um, and I think we ended up in the end doing about 75% of the city, if I remember correctly. And in fact, in times where we would like find a storm drain that didn't exist on the map, we still hit it anyways. And, uh, yeah. So, we did that, and then at their annual, when the Surfrider Foundation had, like, kind of their annual meeting, where they, the, the heads kind of get up and they talk about, like, what conservation projects or whatever they worked on over the course of the year in order to, you know, save the oceans and things like that. And the gentleman who was in charge of the chapter uh, where I lived, you know, everyone's talking about all these multiple initiatives. He's like, oh yeah, so we had this family um, and this is what they did. So it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it and I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot. And what's interesting is the whole, the whole idea behind uh, a scout project isn't so much the project itself. It is about teaching the the youth to act in leadership roles, specifically to organize the project, put it together, organize volunteers, and execute and make it happen. Um, that's really what it's about. And yes, accomplishing the project is important, but it's also important to be able to realize like what went wrong and trying to figure out why it went wrong and how to correct for that. Um, I was, I think it was seven, 16, 17 at the time, if I remember correctly, um, when I did it. I think it was 17, now that I think about it. But, yeah. Okay. This is looking and smelling fantastic. Okay. There's a bit of a burp there. I'm going to let that continue to cook. Chop some tomatoes while I'm at it. Because I want tomatoes on my tacos. And Mrs. Hueso is down for that too. Yeah, I was invited to that city council meeting. Um, how can you get an invite if no one recognizes you beforehand? An invite to what, Scott? I'm not, not sure I'm following. I'm liking where this is going. I was thinking about getting out the potato masher for this. Yeah, let's uh, let's get the potato masher. Oh, I've not even added any salt. We should probably at least. That is bland. Surprisingly bland. See how long it takes to actually trigger. <laughs> that is bland. <laughs> Surprisingly so. <laughs>
So for anybody who doesn't know what this is, um, this is a kombu salt that I made. Um, so it's got like natural uh, MSG mixed into it and it's also really, really fine. Um, so that amount that I put on was maybe half a teaspoon at most. Hey, Mrs. Wayso is home. How's it going, baby? All right, so let's let's get this mashed up. How you doing? Good. Oh, did the managers finally? Uh... No, I had to just approve it. Ah, because people are dumb. Hey, people, party people. Which pot that shapes the plant <laughs> needs more time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twice as strong. <laughs> needs more salt, more time, and twice as strong. Nice, nicely See, done. Scott, you have the best puns. Scott Connor, king of the puns. <laughs> That's really funny. All hail the king of the pun. I was just listening to that in the car. That's what, that's what makes it even more funny. That was the song that I ended on. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. I need to get that. This is your potato meat concoction? Yeah. Uh, there's a fork there. Do you want to try it? Sure. I'll give it a well. Smells good. Mmm. I like that. <laughs> not bland, right? No. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Thank you, Scott. You saved us from the blandness. From the blandness. <laughs> Space Karen, queen of the bland. Oh. Poor Karen. I don't feel bad for Karen. What did I add? Oh, I added my kombu salt. That's what I added. That and my, uh, my saltless taco seasoning. That's what's in here in terms of uh, flavor. And that color is looking very reminiscent of like refried beans. And I'm here for that because refried beans are delicious. Okay. So I'm gonna get this off of here real quick. And actually finish kind of prepping this stuff. Although, before I start prepping this stuff, um, on my stove, which I don't know if you can see uh, that. So that is a eight quart uh, Lake Rousset that I've got oil in and there's a candy thermometer stuck into it. I'm gonna turn it on and start to get it heated and then I'll bring it over here um, when we're actually ready to fry. Uh, so then that way we can have uh, a good time together. So that's the plan. I love it when the plan comes together. It's true. All right. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. Just chopping tomatoes. Oh yeah, I was <laughs> I was talking about that potato, uh, I'm sorry, the broccoli cheddar soup that I made. So there was an idea that I had that instead of necessarily sauteing all the vegetables ahead of time and also blanching the broccoli florets to use as a garnish, the idea that I had was, well, what if we, what if we steam the vegetation and then blitz it up. So then that way, I mean, there's literally, other than whatever fat is in the cheese that you add, that's the only fat that is in that soup. Um, now granted, steaming only cooks it through, but to be honest, with the sauteing and everything, I, other than adding some salt and using a little bit of butter, that was it. I wasn't like trying to get any color from uh, browning the vegetation or anything like that. I was just trying to cook them enough to where they would soften up and um, blend up really easily. So if I could 
steam all that stuff, then blend it, I, I would achieve the exact same thing um, with less effort, I think. So I'm going to give that a go on a kind of a mini trial basis. And then um, if that ends up working out like I suspect it does. Um, oh, thanks for subscribing, darling. <laughs> Um, what kind of oil am I frying in? Oh, uh, I currently have vegetable oil in there. Um, most of the time, yes, this is true. Um, I have vegetable oil in there right now. And you could use just about anything else. Um, I would avoid olive oil. Uh, that's no bueno for frying. Ideally, if you have like peanut oil, um, or if you can score a gallon of grapeseed oil at a great price, that would be fantastic too. Um, some recipes that I saw actually will fry up, fry up these tacos in lard, which isn't anywhere near as bad as most people think. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm just using vegetable oil. It's actually, I've got a, a gallon in there. Um, it holds it just fine and still has plenty of room um because i'm thinking i can safely get about maybe four tacos at a time in there that would be my guess because i don't really want to have them touching i'd like to avoid that as much as possible um just because if stuff is touching it's not going to fry up all well okay So I don't need a ton of lettuce, I don't think. Just because I don't need it, however. Or tag hitting the water bowl. Gotcha. All right. So we got our lettuce, we got our cheese, we got our tomatoes, we got our pickled onions. Jane, the dog they call Jane. Lettuce abuse hardly. Um. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Mrs. Weso is an expressing a concern that I'm going to drop like 20 tacos into the oil at once. No, no my darling, that my is not true. Is you're going to fry the tomatoes and lettuce with the No, 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 yeah, they don't put, they don't fry it with the stuff in there. Okay. They only fry it, they put in the cheese and the lettuce and stuff after the fact. A lawsuit. Oh, oh, Scott, you sir are in rare form. My uh, video preview screen is completely frozen on here, but clearly we're still running, so it's all good. I need to come up with a custom uh, greeting for Scott as the king of puns. It's gotta be a pun greeting. Oh, that's true. It's gotta be a pun greeting, definitely. Okay, hey, thanks for stopping by Mini Metal. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Have yourself a good night. Uh, stay warm out there. It's a cold, cold one. Um, get thee to a punnery. Hoy vey. Okay. I think we are about ready to start assembly. Yeah. Okay. All of this is going to be for after the fact. So I can move this over. 
get it out of the way. Actually, since I'm here like this, let me grab line. Punisher. Oh, oh. All right. Okay. Got our lime wedges. We've got our pickled onion. We got. It. Yeah, I think we are good to go. All right. How are we looking on oil temp? Not even ready, sir. So I can turn up the heat. We're good. All righty. So you still got a while on that oil. That's okay. Side for now. Let's get those. And work for assembly as for pulling the onions out if you have a quality tortilleria in your area um, get fresh tortillas from them absolutely um, we do have one but their schedules a little wonky sometimes so I don't I don't really know like when their tortillas are gonna be fresh um, Sometimes they're very much not, like I found out the last time I went there. There's our crema. Okay, so we got that. There's our meat mixture. Um, So we got our meat mixture here. We got our tortillas. So let's see. As per all the white lady recipes, because um, most of the blogs that I saw that had these in them were written by white women, oddly. I don't know why that is. Um, they all talk about kind of spreading it on. And uh, Hmm, that tortilla is splitting. Okay, so that no work. Okay, so let's see, what can we do? Thinking we should put microwave these with a damp towel and make them a bit more pliable because that is not gonna work for us. If I had a spray bottle, this would probably work a lot better, but I don't have... Yeah, it's just water. 
Yeah, but I don't know how long that water's been in there. Okay. So these are in a damp towel. Don't need luck, this won't blow the circuit. Yeah, the electrical in this place is a little janky. The microwave is on the same circuit as um, a huge chunk of this house. Don't ask me why. And I want to say it's like a 15 amp circuit or something like that. Um, and so honestly, for the longest time, we couldn't use the microwave because it would pop the circuit breaker and Mrs. Weso's mom was on oxygen and that oxygen concentrator was on the same circuit. Don't ask me why. That's why it's That's true. Well, it, yeah. Free laptop. That's true. Yes. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. You are correct. The houses in the 60s electrical systems weren't meant to have uh, 50 billion things on it that were simultaneously trying to stream and concentrate oxygen and stuff like that. So I get that. Okay. Can't use a dishwasher and a microwave in your house at the same time. Oh, it's used to be a range hood. So just a fan It's probably on your lighting circuit. Yeah. So the range hood is literally attached to the microwave and all it does is suck it up and spit it right out into my forehead. It is genuinely the most useless thing. So. Okay. Well, we're, we're gonna uh, put tacos in at about 360 Fahrenheit. We are currently at about 210. Ooh, okay, we got some steamy steamy coming off of this so this should this should be okay oh yeah there we go nice and pliable now yeah okay let's try Ta -da! taco okay Let's poke it back in. Excellent. That is a lot of meat. Alright, we'll cut it down. Or leave it. There. How about that? It's a boy taco. Okay, so let's see. There. And. One, ah, ah, ah. So, okay. We're only going to fill them like that much. Well, the nice thing about not filling them as much, as much as it means I get to eat more. More tacos is more better. Okay. That ah 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 is really important for anybody who grew up on Sesame Street. Three, three tacos. Not even at my normal round one. Oh, that one's got a big hole in it. That will become. Oh, that one's also got a hole in it. What the heck? Man, the QC in this place. That's got holes in the bottom. That's concerning. Okay. 
four. Four tacos. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I don't see a reason why this wouldn't. We can turn these into taquitos. Ah, ah, ah. Because tacos and taquitos, I mean, they're just rolled tacos. Why not? That's what, six? All right, so that's six, I think. That's gonna be a good round one. You gotta make flautas? What? You gotta make donuts at some point? Okay, we can do that. Put donuts in the Discord. If you like F451, you might like some Neil Stevenson novels. Yes, actually, I have read Neil Stevenson. Um, I liked uh, his. Um, a lot of his earlier work, like Snow Crash was kind of the big one, um, Cryptonomicon, uh, what was the, there was one before Snow Crash, I think it was like Zodiac or something like that, it was like an eco thriller that I really liked. Um, then he did uh, the big three book series following um, Sir Isaac Newton and turning lead to gold and all that stuff. Um, Oh, William Gibson's also awesome. I love William Gibson, too. Um, Diamond Age. Diamond Age was a really good one that I enjoyed. Um, which was more of Broke Cycle. Okay, yeah, that's right. It was Broke Cycle. Um, the Broke Cycle, yeah, it was kind of all over the place a little bit. Um, where it was like, oh, we're following, you know, Jack. And now we're following What's-Her-Face. And now we're following this. And so, anyways... Let's actually, you know what? Let's nuke a few more and do some rollies. We'll do some rolled tacos while we're waiting for the oil. Three ten of them. Yeah, I really like the cyberpunk genre. Um, I know it sort of fizzled out, really. Uh, they kind of felt like it couldn't really go anywhere, but um, yeah, I, I was a big fan. Snow Crash was a fantastic book. I really, really loved that book. There were some concepts in there that I thought were really cool. Somebody posted, oh, this, I don't know, I think I saw it on Facebook where they had like uh, an L-shaped antenna coming out of their head, like a Wi-Fi antenna. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they did that like years ago. Cause that was something that actually happened in Snow Crash. Cause it allowed What's-Her-Face in order to, to communicate with everybody on the ship. But, Sevens is, not familiar with that one, Anathem.
330. Okay, we are getting close. So part of me is thinking we should bring this over for the final eating. Generally speaking, folks, I do not recommend doing what I'm doing right now, walking around with an extremely hot pot of oil. Okay, now it's almost at 340. I've got my tongs and I've got my tray here. Let's make a roll of taco. Hmm. Canister is making noise. Tells me it might be running low. Which is why I always keep it spare. Almost at 350. Okay. Good luck, Icenic Wolf. Um, I completely understand about uh, doing tech help for in laws and family and stuff like that. Have a good one. Um, take care. Uh, Scott 2572, I'm frying at 360. At least that's what I'm bringing the oil to. Uh, just because once, you know, tacos start getting added, it's going to drop the temp about 350 or so which is kind of where we want it to be and we are at we are just about to hit 360 okay oh here goes everything this could be a spectacular failure let's hope not They float. I did not expect that. Yeah, I think four is about good. Oh, that first tortilla is splitting. Nice. Tree fitted. We all float down here. Okay. keeping a skimmer handy because as you can see some of the interior is coming out which I knew was gonna happen anyways but this way we can kind of clean it up so that it doesn't burn and make uh, make the oil taste nasty So far, so good. Hmm. <laughs> what? Look harder next time? I never saw it. Here's the scary shot. Look harder next time, Lumpy. <laughs> David, what does burning smell like? That's a good one.
Also just wanted to give a quick shout out to all the lurkers. I know you're lurking. Enjoy the lurk. I don't know who you are, but I'm glad you're here. Hopefully you're being edutained a little bit. Or at least Scott's puns are keeping you entertained. Okay, I think these are looking good. the oil what do you, do with you mean afterwards um okay it's getting a little high so let's turn that heat down um what i will usually do with spent oil like this um is it's good for a couple of fries to be honest um meaning like you can deep fry a couple of times um this has got a lot of fine particulate in it at the moment, so I'm going to want to filter this pretty well um, in order to get all those little floaties out. Because um, the floaties will make, um, make it go rancid way quicker. Alright, well, let's get that out. And let's get some floaties out. This one's got a big split in it. I don't really want to fry it. But those are looking and smelling pretty good. I was just thinking I might need a set of needle nose pliers in order to get that uh, giant toothpick out. Yeah. Oh, Kelly's here. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's keep the political stuff to very minimal. Poor favor. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, just, you know, let's let's be careful about that. Mmm, fried onion's pretty good. Okay. out quite nicely. So far so good. Okay. So far, so good. 410, 420. I, you know what? I haven't actually seen what our um, gas prices currently are. Um, part of me is afraid to look. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, because when I got gas... Uh, what was that, a week, week and a half ago? Um, I think I paid 367. Okay. 
All right, we're looking good. Okay. One of my biggest concerns about doing this was how much of the filling was actually going to be left inside after the fact. But that also probably comes down to what the... Uh, all right, let's turn this off. Okay, so we got those taquitos and that last taco. All right, I'm going to go take this back over to the stove. I got a clear path. I don't have any dogs at my feet. No dogs. Oh, okay. Okay. Push that out of the way. Okay, we got tacos. So let's see. I don't know how visible it is, but eh, at least there's some of the filling in there. It's not a ton, but there's definitely some in there. Yeah, it's kind of the same for this. Yeah, that was kind of my concern is that didn't seem like there was a ton of filling all up in there. This one, yeah. And I think I also maybe let these go a little long because they're super crispy and not really wanting to, to open very much. That one's looking a lot better. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that my original thought of how I had it... Um, smeared up over the entire side. I think that actually would have worked better because um, these don't have a ton of filling going on in them. Um, and I'm a little concerned that, yeah, trying to open these up, it's like the tacos are gonna fall apart. But, like I said, never made this before. Hmm. Okay, so what could we do differently? Well, like I said previously, I think maybe the key is really going to have a bit more filling in there because judging from how much was actually in the oil after the fact, that the, the consistency of the filling... I mean, you're just going to lose some anyways as a sacrifice to the, the fry oil. Um, but in terms of just trying to keep it to a minimum, possibly a thicker consistency. Um, one thought that I had earlier today was about using, yeah, taco salad, definitely, if needs be. Um, one thought that I had earlier was instead of necessarily using potatoes using like uh like pinto beans or black beans or something like that and using that to uh mash in uh for the consistency so that's a a possibility okay all right so far so good onions out.
So the the pickling on these, by the way, um, I I did kind of my standard pickling recipe, um, which is a cup of vinegar, a cup of water, a cup of sugar, and then a bit of salt uh, to kind of offset it. But I also added some Mexican oregano and a couple of chili japon um, to it. Yeah, you get that oregano hit, little sweet, tangy from the vinegar. Not a whole lot of heat, but that's okay. And these are just giant, like, tweezers. I picked these up at, I think it was H Mart for a couple of bucks. But when you're pulling stuff like this out, they're totally invaluable. So in that way, you're not having to stick your fingies into the jar. Okay. So, got that there. A little bit of crema. Um, yes, you could, but I wouldn't leave metal tongs in fry oil long term because they're just going to heat up because they're metal and hot tongs are no fun. Um, like I, I, I was talking about earlier on, um, that one of the, um, one of the suggestions was, is using wooden clothes pins. Um, to kind of keep them closed, but I think part of the issue with these was just the fact that I probably left them in a little bit longer than I should have. Um, you're the guy with the pun. Yes, yes, you are. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't use tongs in fry oil, so... Ba -na 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 -na. Hang on. Let's do that. Gee, Vera. And turn those off. The beauty shot of fried tacos. If I had slice, uh, if I had ripe avocado right now, I would absolutely throw a couple of slices on there. Um. Unfortunately, all the avocados that I have are still quite green, but that's okay because they will get ripe and be ripe for about half a second. So let's see. Now comes the most important part. Let's give these a taste and see what we think. Back. There it is. Okay. I'm thinking the lag on that is because it's plugged into a hub as opposed to straight in. That's my guess at least. I'm talking about the stream deck. Let's see. Okay. First impressions. Mm. Excuse me. ASMR. 
Okay. First impressions. 1110, I would destroy a platter of those. That was tasty. All right, good. Mrs. Hueso, would you like to uh, try one? Sure. Do you want to come in or do you want to stay no, back there, like, stay lurking around like Gollum? <laughs> As I scope like Gollum. Yeah, 1010, I would absolutely destroy a platter of these and not uh, look back. Go for it. They look super crunchy. They are. Yeah? Yes. Mm. Oh, and I totally forgot the lime. That's good. That's very good. You know you can have that full taco. I can, but I can't eat it all at once. Okay, fair enough. My mouth's not as big as yours. True. Yeah. Yeah, these are these are fantastic. Um, I, I think the there you go. I, I think, um, like I said, if I fill them up a little bit more uh, before frying them, I think that will um, that'll work a little bit better to their advantage. There's a little less fry time. A little less fry time too, but I mean, it, it's got a, a phenomenal crunch. Um, so yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely give these a shot. Um, I'll put together something and stick it up on the Discord uh, for the filling. Um, I mean, it was my basic taco meat recipe, which if you saw the taco salad stream from, what was that, like two weeks ago or something? Um, the, the basic methodology of doing the meat with water in order to keep it nice and pillowy. Uh, but then also having the potatoes in there at the same time, so then that way they boil up together, and then you just mash them together. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's kind of a winner. I mean, I got a fair amount of filling left, but uh, kind of tempted to try one of these rolled ones and see how that works out. But for that, kind of feel like I should have had. Yeah, forget it. Mm. That turned out nice. <laughs> so I'm, I'll be making rolled ones for you. Yeah. Well, okay. Try this first. Oh yeah, you gotta, you gotta. You got to taste test it, find out if it's poisonous or not. It could be. So I'm taking one for the team, y'all. She's doing it for you guys. That's right. Because this could be crap. I got to dip it in some crema. These yeah. are really crunchy. Yeah. You'll poke your eye out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's some serious stick. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, it's been sitting out for a little bit. It's still quite hot. We need to, like, plate them up by drizzling the crema and lettuce and yeah. tomato. Yeah. So that turned out great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I gotta say, for a first, for, for a first time experiment, this turned out really nicely. I'm really happy. So, do I ever make salsa? You know what? I do. Um, it, uh, but are, are we talking about like actual salsa salsa or are we talking about like pico de gallo? Because um, I do both. Like I'll make salsas. Um, I had thought about maybe doing one for this, but given the fact that it was kind of a, a really basic experiment and kind of see where things were at, I didn't feel like okay let's let's like go the full uh oh and you get a treat and you get a treat you get a second treat yeah did she breakfast? I ran no she didn't I ran out of treats Vera hasn't been eating a uh, heck of a lot recently I think I talked about this when I made dog food um 
She hasn't been eating a heck of a lot recently, um, just because she's kind of going through her ant flows in town sort of thing. And um, usually first thing in the morning, she's not really feeling it, but she'll eat at night. So it's like, okay, good. So yeah, no, Pico is great, but like an actual salsa salsa, totally like, you know, roasting tomatoes or like a t tomatillo base or <laughs> Uh, something like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's, um, yeah. I, I love a good salsa that's got a lot of flavor and you just kind of like flip it onto the taco. Um, I'm kind of thinking like, I mean, there's so many different possibilities with tacos. Tacos could be like a, literally a regular thing. Um, like first Tuesday of the month, it's Taco Tuesday or something like that. Intermittent fasting. Yeah, well, the, the concern about her not eating lumpy is that um, she's clearly lost some weight but it's it, it, to me at least it's obvious um, that she has dropped some weight and so that's of a concern to me so whenever we do feed her we're giving her more than we normally would um, to kind of help her out with that I'm just hoping that what she's going through passes really quickly and she gets back to her normal her normal self, uh, barking at like anything that dares pass in front of the house and chasing the birds and squirrels and rabbits that dare come into the yard. Um, so that's kind of what we're hoping, but yeah, folks, this is, uh, this is dinner for tonight. And, um, I, I, I have a, a powerful need to make many more of these and just pound them. So Unless there's any further questions from the class tonight. When our female went through heat, it was nasty. Yeah, it, to, and to be honest, Lumpy, like, this is the first time that she's had a really bad heat. Like, every other time that she's had been in heat, it's been relatively mild. Um, it's, like, it's come and it's gone, and, you know, Jane was like, hey. Um, but, uh... This time it's way, way worse than it has been. Yes, exactly. Jay is the one that lets us know that she's in heat because he knows it and he lets us know. And we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you found a brand that is really good, but Kroger stopped carrying it. Uh, dessert, Desert Pepper Trading Company Silver Tequila Salsa. I'm not, I don't think I've heard of those. It's probably like a regional thing. Um, Scott, if you've got a link, I mean, just shoot a link to me for it and I'll have a look at it. Um, yeah. So, anyways, folks, uh, have a wonderful night. You can find it on Amazon. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyways, have a wonderful night. Um, I'm going to make some tacos and eat dinner because I be starving. Um, let's see if... Let's see how badly this freaks out if I... No. Let's do this. Thank you, Lumpy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's see who all is on right now. If this actually decides to load. Oh! Let's see. Panty Pants is on. Pio's on. Ooh. Kind of thinking, you know what? Panty just made affiliate. I'm kind of thinking we should go raid Panty. Um, yeah, so let's, hey, Windeer, thanks so much for stopping by today. Let's see. Yeah, Panty Pants Streams, she just made affiliate. Um, let's see. Thinking, it's thinking, it's still thinking. Still thinking. There we go. Yeah, 
Okay, so she's, it looks like she's playing a, uh, an expansion for Borderlands called Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. So if you're not into video games, feel free to opt out of the raid. Uh, but for those that know Panty, Panty's awesome. And uh, yeah, let's go, uh, let's go show her a little bit of love. So thank you so much, folks. And uh, I will see you all on Thursday. And yeah, let's see if this thing actually works. So, see ya, folks. Hello, boys and girls. DK's making a snack today. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? DK's making a snack today. Shove it right into your mouth. DK's making a snack today. What's it gonna be? Is he making it for me? DK's making a snack today. It's time for tactical snacking with DK. What's it gonna be?